So J.P. Morgan, far and away the best performer on the S&P today. It's up about 8 percent, 7 percent as it pairs its gains, while PNC shares are now trading back to levels we haven't seen since November of 2020. So are the bank problems really behind us now or not? Let's ask David Conrad. He's Large Caps Bank Analyst at KBW, a steeple company, along with our very own Dom Chu, who joins me here on set, and CNBC.com banking reporter Hugh Sun. Welcome, everybody, and it's great to see you. David, I'll start with you. And uh, regional banks, I think people feel a lot better if we – look, if the carry was up 5 percent today, I think we could all say this issue is more firmly behind us, but it's not. Yeah, I mean, I think PNC is probably somewhat of a, a decent read through uh, going into next week on the fundamentals, perhaps. You know, they had pretty elevated deposit costs and um, non interest bearing deposits were down, you know, mid single digits quarter over quarter. You know, I think the issue also with PNC, though, is one of the more expensive stocks, you know, heading into the into the print. And so it was trading at a, you know, north of a 20 percent premium to peers, largely because it's a high quality, you know, strong management team. So they were more exposed to kind of a, a guide that missed expectations and brought the stock down. Hugh, what would you add to that? Hey, Kelly, great to be with you. So I, I would look at it through the lens of net interest income. So if you look at J.P. Morgan, theirs was up uh, by nearly 50 percent. It was a huge uh, beat by uh, over a billion dollars. Uh, and they actually got it to uh, a $7 billion in excess of what they had said that net interest income would be in this year, uh, 2023. They're saying it's going to be $81 billion versus $74 billion. Now, look at PNC. PNC actually had a 3% decrease in net interest income because, as David mentioned, uh, you know, their funding costs are higher. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean in plain English? It means that they actually have to pay people higher interest rates to convince them to keep their money at PNC. And I think that's the issue that they're going to face that, and a lot of their other regionals are facing is that they don't have uh, the kind of franchise that keeps these kind of sticky deposits at such a low cost as J.P. Morgan does, which, oh, as we sure. know, is the beneficiary of that uh, deposit flight. And, Dom, so we have kind of two problems coming to a head today. We have this issue we're talking about with banks specifically, sure. while at the same time the Fed speak is, you know, Christopher Waller is pretty hawkish. And so we've got kind of this double whammy for those who are hoping for maybe a little bit smoother sailing today. And it's not just that. I mean, the, the points being brought up here are, are, are very much on point with regard to the regional bank versus big bank dynamic. And the reason why we're looking so closely at PNC today is not necessarily because it's so indicative of regional banking in general, but it becomes like the appetizer, right, to what's going to happen next week. And for PNC specifically, we're talking about a super regional bank that, yes, has some of those funding costs and will have to compete with other banks to get customer deposits in, increasing funding costs, lowering net interest income. But it's also about whether or not that deposit flow is steady. And what we did see from PNC is that their deposits did actually grow yes. ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a huge growth in deposits whatsoever. But what it shows is, is that for a bank of, say, a PNC size or a U.S. bank's size or one of these other reach super regionals like Truist or, 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 you know, regions, maybe those deposits are not as flighty as they are at, say, a PacWest a Western alliance, a First Republic or otherwise. And that's the reason why people are looking at this, not because it's indicative of those pro problem banks, mm -hmm. but because it is a way for you to benchmark what other regional banks will be like in this coming week. Yeah, and, and David, to, to the point Dom's making, these are some of the stronger super regional banks, right? These... I don't think it's going to get better as we get into the smaller, you know, areas, maybe more specialized. It's a different line, a uh, different line of business. Tell me as we spin this into <clears throat> next week, what your big takeaways are, what you think are now going to be the pressure points for the market. Well, again, it's all going to be about deposits. And if you look at PNC, you know, their deposit costs in increased about 70 percent relative to the Fed funds increase. Mm -hmm. You know, J.P. Morgan only increased deposit costs 55 percent. Mm -hmm of what the Fed of the Fed funds did in the quarter. And so when you start to get to, you know, that 70 percent range, um, you know, to Hugh's point, it gets tough to really grow the NII. And so we're expecting, you know, cumulative betas to be, you know, the mid 40 percent range by the time we end the year. And so that means really escalating deposit costs over the next two to three quarters.